So l let me explain it to you this way. I, I saw this illustration. I wanna help you guys understand this. This is what our life looked like before Christ, okay? This is my life, your life, all of our lives before Christ. This is a person who does a lot of bad things, okay? This is a person who does a lot of good things, and this is a person who is perfect. In fact, I'm gonna, only, I'm gonna go ahead and say, fill in the blank here, there's only one perfect person. His name was Jesus, right? And so um, here's a bad person, here's a good person. And I'm gonna say this, because I didn't come to Christ till I was 17, so I'm gonna kind of throw me into this loop a little bit here, because I know me, okay? And I need a person who's grown up in church their whole life, like you were born on a pew. Like, like instead of singing lullabies, you, your mom sang, I fly away, okay? And somebody, just anybody. Yeah, what's your name? What? I can't hear you. Dawn. Dawn. All right. So here's Dawn. Dawn was really, really good. She grew up in church. She did a lot of good things. But so here's me, okay? Here's my life. So this, this S equals sin here. So I sinned. In fact, I sinned a whole lot when I was growing up. I sinned. There was that party that one night that I went to. It was, yeah, that was bad. And I sinned and I kept sinning and, and I sinned because I was a sinner and uh, I kept sinning and was doing all these things. And, and I even kicked my neighbor's cat one time. Just want to throw that out there. Um, but then every now and then I would do something righteous. So I would say something good to someone like, hey, you look really nice today. Or I would, do, I would open a door for somebody or I would do something that I thought was righteous. So I had all this sin, but every now and then I had some righteousness going on, okay? But let's talk about Dawn real quick. She grew up in church and so she didn't have a whole lot that God needed to deliver her from. Um, you know, maybe God delivered her from the hymn book. I'm not sure. But um, she had all these righteous things that she did in her life. And she probably wouldn't say, you know, I never kicked a cat. I never thought about kicking a cat. Um, I just did a lot of righteous things. But the truth is this, no matter how many righteous things she did, she also every now and then, she did some sinful things. And so, you know, she had a sin here. One time she, just a little sin, and then <laughs> sin here. Dawn's a pretty good person, right? But then there's Jesus. Jesus was completely righteous. All of God's righteousness was in Jesus. Every bit of God's righteousness was in him, the perfect one. How do we ever measure up to that standard? How do we ever get there? This is what my life, you're like, this is what our account looked like before Christ. The only problem with Dawn was this, even though she had a lot of R's, Isaiah 64, six says this, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. So see, we can look over here and we can say, well, Sean tried to be righteous, but he was just a sinner. So like, you know, maybe, maybe S equals stupid because have you ever sinned real stupid before? <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. But, but over here, Dawn, she, her sins and even her righteousness, the Bible says, her attempts to be righteous are rags apart from Jesus's righteousness. So how in the world did we ever get out of that? That sounds to me like a big fat performance trap. Here, here's, how we, here's how we got out of that, okay? I wanna show this to you real quick. All right, this is me, this is Dawn. And remember, these are our accounts. My sin and attempts to be righteous were still sinful. Don's righteousness plus the little sin was still sinful. You and I were all born into this. Jesus, completely righteous. But here's what happened. Here's what changed and here's what ends the shame game. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become, everyone say become, the righteousness of God. Not might become, become. Not become when I enter heaven become and get in Jesus' presence become, but at the point that I trust Jesus, I become. So here's what's crazy about this. 
The Bible says God took him who knew no sin and he took all of the righteousness out of Jesus' account and he put in Jesus' account all the sin of all humanity. And when he did that, it forever wiped the sin from all of these accounts. And you're going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, that, that can't be true. Now listen, when Jesus paid for the sin, he paid for all sin, past, present, and future for all humanity. So here's the part that's gonna totally blow up your performance strategy. People don't die and go to hell because of sin. People die and go to hell because of unbelief. And here's why I know that. Jesus paid for all the sin of the world. He put it all, God put it all on himself. And even though Jesus paid for all the sin in the world, there is still something in me and Don and you that is empty. We don't have the righteousness of Christ until this verse. God made him who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of Christ. On April 5th, 1987, I knelt beside of my bed and I asked Jesus Christ to save me and all of his righteousness that was in his account got put in my account. The day that Dawn gave her life to Jesus Christ, all of the righteousness of Jesus was put into her account. How about you? Are you still trying to perform? Still trying to measure up? Still trying to hope that God's gonna grade on a curve? Because his standard was perfection. How, and I, how do you and I ever reach the righteousness of God? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. I love this. Before verse 21, I don't even have the scripture, but it says this in verse 19. God was reconciling the world to himself through Jesus, not counting men's sins against them. But the day I believed the day I trusted, the day I gave my life to Jesus, all of that righteousness was put into my account. And you know what that transaction's called? Grace. Grace. Harith. Grace. 